In a world where America has a map of the world before it's figured out sailing, and Brazil has bookcases worth of books before it's mastered writing, there is a 12-way Mexican standoff where everyone has stealth bombers instead of handguns. It's basically risk on steroids. Would you be interested in a trade agreement with England? Civ 5 is a brilliant education on the ideas of nation-states, empires, international relations, war, peace, and why you should never trust anyone. You start with your civilization fighting with spears and guide them through the rich tapestry of human history until they're fighting with nuclear weapons. You pick a historical leader and build your empire. Or if you're playing as Genghis Khan, destroy other people's empires. You can settle cities, which no civilization would take to extremes. Damn it, Alexander. You can spread your religion. Totally not something that could lead to war. And you can trade. Would you be interested in a trade agreement with England? Never mind. Let's see what we can build. A granary, a shrine, Stonehenge? Well, obviously I'm going to focus on a massive testament to how amazing I am instead of food for my people. There's only one copy of each world wonder allowed in the game. So I need to get this before anyone else. Come on, just one more turn. But my one was so close to being finished. Why? Why would you stop building now? Let's start exploring this vast world and settling new cities. Looks like we'll have some neighbours. They look friendly. May I borrow some sugar, please, neighbour? Or you can burn my city down. That's fine. Ah, some non-barbarian neighbours. Brilliant. Yes, I will make a declaration of friendship with you. You'll make a great ally. And then you can declare war on me. That's fine. That's totally fine. Okay, let's forget about all these nice buildings that provide food for my citizens. It's time for war. Just one more turn, and that's my friend dealt with. Now I can build my empire in peace. And now everyone thinks I'm a warmonger. Brilliant. They started it. They sent three units to attack me, so I annexed their entire empire. What's a little genocide between friends? Okay, I can handle you. I still have a strong army. All right, two on one. Maybe this is workable. Oh, come on. I'm not a warmonger. -er. Oh, well, you would know what a warmonger -er looks like, wouldn't you? <sighs> Let's try again. It's only 8 p.m., so I have time for one more turn. And now it's 4 a.m. Just one more turn. Somehow I've managed to use diplomacy and trade. Would you be interested in <laughs> diplomacy and trade to build my empire? We've even avoided war. Well, mostly. Let's see how we can win the game. Science! All we need to do is discover the secrets of the universe and launch a spaceship. Hopefully we can hold off the armies of the more aggressive civilizations while we focus on mastering new technologies so they can be instantly stolen from us by foreign spies, maybe we should try something else. Culture! This involves making your empire the most appealing place in the world, and having more interesting buildings and works of art than the empires that have invaded half the planet. Sounds like such an easy challenge. But at least you can trade works of art and... Would you be interested? Ah, Diplomacy! For some reason, the independent, tiny city-states have almost as much voting power in the United Nations as the huge empires. But if they're allied with you, then you can decide how they vote. So it's just a matter of making friends with them and... God damn it, Alexander! Well, that leaves a domination victory. So you're all gonna die. Conquering the world one turn at a time. And I've won through total domination. The world has been united under my rule. They all came under my control through force, so millions of people are now being oppressed by a foreign power. Democracy is essentially dead, and the civil unrest around the world is being crushed by an iron fist. Now that's efficiency.